People paying money to see me in a 20 by 20 ring. Wrestling fans, welcome to another edition of the 20 by 20 Ring Crew. I am your co-host Joe, and I am here with Mr. Matt Classic himself. What's up, Matt? What's going on? We are back here for episode 71, our third, if I'm not mistaken, our third installment or episode uh, officially part of the PodCoin app. Yes. Uh, once again, if you guys don't know what PodCoin is, please... Take the time out, 20x20crew.com slash podcast slash podcoin. Sign up through us through our webpage. Get yourself 200 free podcoins right off the bat. You get paid to listen to podcasts. Hopefully, you're sitting and you're listening to us, the 20 by 20 ring crew. Uh, we truly appreciate all of our listeners. Enough of me selling shit already. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> We appreciate you listening to us beforehand, but uh, you now know, you get to get paid. Get paid. Don't do it for free anymore. That's that's silly. Get, get paid <laughs> to listen to us. Thank you so much for for all the support. And thank you, thank you for the opportunity to podcoin. What a, what Hell a, yeah, what a tremendous. Uh, you know what? You guys are all right. <laughs> yeah, you're all right in my book. Uh, as always, we have wrestling on in the background, and uh, we are currently watching the first night. Of the 2019 New Japan Pro Wrestling G1 Climax Tournament taking place from lowly Dallas, Texas, American Airlines Center. Wow! You see, I mean, you you said it so modestly, but you know, this is a huge. It's a, a huge, huge deal, thing, you know? man. It is. <laughs> and you know what? I was before we started recording the the episode, I had remarked to Matt, like, look at the audience. It looked kind of like, I don't want to say half empty because it, it, was, it was more than half full but there was a, a lot of noticeable empty seats but you know what now looking at them at the crowd now a lot of the empty seats have now filled up it's not as empty as it was but um definitely not a sold out show and i you know there could be a, any number of things that have, have went on with this whole debacle but uh, for my money, I told Matt it was either a combination of you know people having the 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 last minute scare of like uh, are these guys going to get their visas and actually show up to the fucking thing? Yeah, there was that issue a few months back. A few months back, right? And then also uh, you know you've got unfortunately all the um, second market uh, ticket ticket sellers who. Mm-hmm. You know they'll they'll purchase tickets uh, right off the bat when they go on sale, and then sell them at a premium price, way over their face value, and uh, that could be what happened here as well. Either way, man, I, I'm I'm kind of shocked. I'm kind of shocked that they didn't sell this out. No, yeah, because I mean this is the the same company that uh, has turned people away. I mean, I get they were. This is a bigger venue. It is a little. It is a little upsetting for me that it's not a full out, a full crowd, sold out crowd. But uh, you know, fuck it. They're 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 not uh, shying away from it. They're not uh, tightening up their camera angles. Yeah, they're, that's that's the that's the other thing we noticed. <laughs> like, there's no. <laughs> there's no, there's no fancy camera work here. They're showing you what they're showing you. You know, and it's, you know, what, it's, it's what's inside that ring. And uh, you know, if uh, if Dallas says you're going to give you a full sold out crowd, there's, there's other places that will. Uh, I hope this doesn't deter them from coming back to the U.S. for the G1 climax because this is a big deal. Um, I, I didn't know why they chose Dallas in the first place, and I'm not trying to bash Texas, but it just seems like um, you know they were so premium West Coast. That why not stick in the West Coast and do a, well, you know, a bigger venue there? I, yeah, that's a good question. I, I don't know. I know they're trying to branch out and, and go all over the states. You know, Chicago is still on their 
to do list. Yeah, I mean, we're definitely hungry for a New Japan show. I, I'm, I'm excited. I, I can't wait for that to happen uh, if and when it does. But yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe Dallas was a just a, a major hub close to the West Coast. I mean, the, the, the what with what thought what I thought of initially was Mark Cuban. And, oh, that too. And yeah, their, their deal with Access TV, and yeah. you know, he. I'm sure that had a lot to do with it. You know, Mark Cuban. For those who don't know, he's the owner of the Dallas Mavericks. He also owns Access TV. Which you can catch New Japan Pro Wrestling on every Friday night, I want to say. Yeah, it's every Friday. Okay, but yeah, it's it's not a sold out crowd, but uh, you know, it's it's still G one. It's still, I mean, can you believe the G one's here already? I mean, it, I can, man. It's, it's, summer's just, here, man. It's, it's officially it's here. It's been flying by, man. And we're already in the G one climax. That means we're already gonna be talking about Wrestle Kingdom. Fuck. Like that's that's already <laughs> happening, you know. So everybody in the G one is is there, with the exception, most notably, of John Moxley, who cannot be there due to his uh, contract with AEW. But uh, yeah, you get a good good glimpse of everybody that's going to be in Block B tag matches because Block A is going at it tonight on this show. This took place, of course, on July 6th. And if you want to check it out, you can always go to our website at twenty x twenty crew dot com slash podcast slash njpw get yourself a subscription through us and get 30 days for free which means you get you get the entire g1 you're gonna get to see the entire g1 for free if you sign up um as of this episode and that's a pretty smart thing to do even and it's funny too because like uh normally when you get uh promotions telling you like hey we have a streaming service and mm-hmm. sign up or whatever they don't they don't normally give you that spiel but kevin kelly on on New Japan's <laughs> English commentary, he will yeah. tell you flat off the bat. You want to wait for the G1 to start and then start a subscription? You'll get the whole thing for free. And like, he's got a point. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's a good way. It's a, it's an honest way to sell your product. It, uh, as you know. far as far as I know, they they are doing tremendous streaming numbers with good. that service. So. Abs- you know, it's it's great. I wish they would get some of the international shit down. I was a little disappointed that uh, yeah the showdown in Australia wasn't live. Uh, they did they did finally put them on there. Yeah, it was, uh, that was kind of a bummer. But you know, there's international things, and that can always be muddy. But uh, but yeah, man, like this is so far been an excellent excellent show and. Uh, Man, I'm just we're sold out or not. I'm I'm just so glad they're doing more U.S. shows for for any old school fan. You might recognize the 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 show called Fighting Spirit Unleashed. That's mm-hmm. that's an older older show that they don't do anymore. Uh, they are doing it, and that's going to be entirely in the United States. Yeah, um, Lowell, Massachusetts, um, New York City, New York City at the Manhattan Center, and what was the third place? It was the old ECW arena. Oh, that's right. The 2300 Arena in Philadelphia, South Philly. Shit. So, I mean, you got some uh, pretty iconic venues, especially the Hammerstein and the 2300 Arena, mm-hmm. that they're going to be at. So, if you're going to be in the area, those are in September. Tickets go on sale July 26th officially. Good luck. Good luck getting them. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, def- definitely check that out and, uh, you know, support professional wrestling here. Busy weekend, man. Busy, busy weekend. Of course, you know, we just came, we just finished the 4th of July weekend. Hope everybody had a good Independence Day. Hope everybody is uh, intact and, you know, was safe and had fun and all that stuff. Joe and I were, had, you know, separate busy schedules and it was hard watching wrestling because, you know, you had the G1. Yeah. You had a whole weekend of Impact Wrestling, which has some interesting things that happened. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and one thing that I want to bring up, though, really quick here, you had a show the same night as the G1 Climax in our home state of Illinois, in Cicero, to be exact. You had MLW Kings of Coliseum. And for those who don't know, they, they named their, 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 their TV tapings, their, their shows, but their actual TV taping for MLW Fusion, which, by the way, a little fun fact here for me personally, I guess, I actually have BN Sports now. What? Yeah. Nice. So I cut the cable. I've mentioned that before. I use PlayStation View and, and the Philo app because they're both super cheap. Uh, for both of those apps, I pay less than half what I was paying on cable. That's a beautiful thing. I, I'm not going to dog the cable company. I'll, I'll keep that you know to myself, but I'm not doing business with them ever again. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I have the second highest package. The highest package is real quick here. Uh, has, includes like HBO and like Showtime. And this I, is for View, right? This is for View. Okay. I get those free via wow. my internet provider. I, I 
long story on how I got that, but I get them free. <laughs> Again, I'm not gonna bash my my ISP either. Yeah, as we're about to see a gem about to happen next. Kenda versus Koto Abushi, first night of the G1. Oh, sure, so that man. that alone should sell you on NJPW. Uh, NJPW World again, 20x20crew.com slash podcast slash NJPW. So this is how this is how cool it is. So I've I've had them for PlayStation View for a year. Okay. And I, I'm not getting paid for this, folks. So this is, I'm just telling you how cool this is. They've since I've since I've had it, they've added about 15 to 20 channels. Oh no shit. Extra, probably more. Okay. You know how much? You know how much they charge me? How much they raise their price by? How much? None. Are you? Fucking they never fucking raise their price. Dude. They just add it in there. They just be like, hey, we you get BN Sports and then the Spanish version of it too. Nice. Like just just cause you know, and some <laughs> other channels. Like here you go. Like I, I I woke up one day and I had like I had like four different extra channels on there. I was like, that's pretty cool. So they're slowly adding channels, and I'm not saying that it's gonna be like that forever. But again, you know, no hidden fees or anything like that. Just be like, hey, we're gonna have to bump you up, or right. you're, not, you're not gonna get this channel. Anyways, so I get BN Sports now. MLW Fusion now comes on Saturday nights at 9, 8 central. Okay. So they're no longer 6.05 on Saturday. They're now 6.05 on Mondays. <laughs> or, man, we're just plugging away here. Yeah. Or you can catch them, you can catch them through our, our good friends over at Fight TV. That's right. Uh, they're on every Tuesday night for free. So you don't have to have BM Sports. You don't have to have PlayStation View if you don't want to. If you don't want to go on YouTube, that's fine, too. You can go on Fight TV absolutely free. Make sure you check out Fight TV, though, on Mondays as well because you get Ring of Honor for free. On Sundays, you get Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. You also get Re- Reality Wrestling for free. And if you go to our website at 20x20crew.com slash podcast slash fight, that's F-I-T-E, we're going to give you $15 of credit for new members only. $15 on us for anything you want to watch. Yeah, it doesn't on even Fight have TV. to be wrestling. Anything they offer. Yeah, you you want to watch boxing, you want to watch MMA, Muay Thai, or if you're a barbarian like Joe, you yes. can watch bare knuckle bare fighting. Bare knuckle boxing. So there you go. Fifteen dollars, do whatever you want. Got to use it on a fight, but you, you know it's yours to watch whatever you want to watch. Plenty of shit on there. Uh, you could even save it. Because the reason why I bring this up. Okay. I love when companies evolve into more. So they they have a weekly TV show. Well, that's not all anymore. November 2nd, from the Cicero Stadium in Cicero, Illinois. It's a great venue, by the way. It is, it's man. It's a great venue. They, Major League Wrestling is putting on their very first pay-per-view. Dude. Saturday Night Super Fight. Congratulations, guys. Man, that's a, that's a big move. It is, I'm, man. I'm so happy to hear and that. And it's going to take place in our backyard. In our backyard, too. So definitely definitely something that uh, I'm personally going to try to go to. I, I would love to try to go, man. Yeah. For sure, yeah. That's... We've been there before for a um, progress show yeah, and an Evolve yeah. show, and uh, there really is not a bad seat in the house. If you want to go in for bleachers, you're not gonna. You're not gonna. They be have like the perfect fucking bleachers. They're 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 probably like three to five feet off the ground to start, and then they raise up to. You know, they keep going up from there. Yeah, yeah. You get to see everything. It's it's great. It's so great. Yeah, definitely a very intimate setting. Very good, good spot for pro wrestling. I mean, they're already making progress with MLW because every time they do a, a TV a, a TV taping, the first night they're there, the actual night they're there, they air an hour of it live. Mm-hmm. So what you saw on Jan- uh, sorry, January, what you saw on July sixth was live wrestling and then the rest is going to be taped cut up in, in the episodes now they're going to do a whole live pay-per-view this company is so legit if you don't a lot of people don't know about it yet i'm telling you people you it's need a shame. you need to you need to watch it I, you don't have to have bn sports you don't have to have youtube you don't i mean you can use it fight if you want to fight youtube bn sports whatever you gotta do check out major league wrestling because it's the, one of the best hour it's usually for me the best hour of pro wrestling of the week I like to save my my episodes. I'll stack them up. I do like three or four at a time. Okay. It's, it's been about a month since I've checked them out, so I'll go back on the fight app and I'll check out three or four episodes in a row. And um, I am most looking forward to seeing uh, Rey Mysterio's cousin, who that uh, that was four episodes ago now, where he debuted, I believe, and I was super fucking impressed. 
especially with his finishing move, which is like a like a Canadian destroyer pile driver off the top rope. You talking about Ray Horace, right? Ray Horace, yes. Well, in this yeah. this particular show, he he fought uh, Myron Reed, who we've seen in, in Evolve. Right. That should be a pretty high high impact. Absolutely, match. absolutely. Uh, the match that you got for the main event for the live portion of the Chicago show was Tom Lawler defending the the MLW Heavyweight Championship against Jacob Fatu. Oh, fuck. So, oh, man. I, I mean, that right there sells itself. Alexander Hammerstone versus Davey Boy Smith Jr. was on the nice. card. Nice. I mean, I'm excited what they're going to do with Davey Boy now that he's uh, no longer with New Japan. Yeah. Yeah. Contra Unit, which is uh, Joseph Samuel and Simon Gotch. Simon Gotch, some of you might remember from WWE. Joseph Samuel is uh, usually the, the tag team partner of Jacob Fatu. Uh, they took on the Von Eric Boys in a tag match. Nice. So should be a solid tag match. There's a there's a, 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 a huge list of guys from all types of backgrounds of pro wrestling. That's what I love about them. They're you know what you see what AEW's doing, MLW is kind of doing that already too. You know I mean I get it. They don't have the elite. They don't have Tony Khan money. But, but they do. They did sign a, a few people to exclusive uh, contracts. That they so did. yeah, there are yeah. wrestlers on their roster that you will not be able to see anywhere else. So yeah, definitely, definitely something to check out, guys. I, I mean, I, I, I can't preach that enough. Like, MLW is definitely legit, and I'm so proud to, to see to see them have their first pay per view. And again, it's gonna be in in Chicago land. So I'm excited. Hell of a way to start off this podcast because you know <laughs> the, 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 the show that as we sit and we watch uh, Kenta versus uh, Kota Bushi. Again, the the G1 started on on July 6. It's going to continue because now they have to go to Japan. Keep that right. in mind. They're from Dallas, Texas right now, or at least for this show. Uh, the second show is not going to be until July 13th, the day after you listen to this episode. Thank you so much for listening, as always. Thank you, thank you. July 13th is a pretty big day. Yours truly uh, is going to be in Jacksonville for Fight for the Fallen, which we've talked about. A great, uh, a great card for charity, victims of gun violence. Yep. Uh, of course, if you if you uh, you know can't make it to the Jacksonville show, sign up with Bleach Report Live. It's no subscription; it's free, and uh, you can watch Fight for the Fallen for free. I don't know how many of these shows you're going to get for free. So, yeah, so some, take advantage of it. Yeah, while you at can. some point they're going to start charging <laughs> uh, for for streaming. So, but uh, yeah, Fight for the Fallen is is a free event if you cannot attend in person. So yeah, definitely check it out. Uh, because I guarantee you the next show, which is going to be all out, is not going to be free. That's right. And so um, <laughs> I bring that up. I bring up the thirteenth, though. You know, we're not. We already talked about Fight for the Fallen. It's going to be a good show. I uh, mean, we, we. You should know that if you don't know that by now, you should know how good they are. But I want to talk about the other show that's happening. We and again, we've already talked about the Kenny Omega comments last week. But Evolve One Thirty One. Okay. That's happening. Uh, we talked about our, our disappointment with this card. Again, you have Adam Cole versus Akira Tozawa, Drew Gulag versus Matt Riddle, and then Josh Briggs versus Anthony Green. You kind of had, the, with the exception of the, the last match I mentioned, you kind of have this NXT versus 205 kind of vibe going on, which would have been a good card if that's what they promoted it as. But again, this, this is, is supposed to be an Evolve anniversary show. Yes. What the fuck? So they updated the card, and. I want to get your opinion on it because it definitely feels more like an evolved show here with these matches. Uh, you have uh, Arturo Ruas versus Anthony Henry. Okay. Uh, Baba Tunde versus Colby Carino, which uh, I think he's officially working for Evolve now. Oh, okay. You have Kurt Stallion versus Sean Maluda, who I think still is employed by WWE, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, versus Stefan Wolf versus Harlan Bravado, which seems to be at every fucking involved show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a fatal four way match, uh, and then you, you two title matches, two more title matches, and you know not, not you have the NXT title match, and then you have these two: Eddie Ga- uh, sorry, Eddie Kingston and Joe Gacy defending the Evolved Tag Team Titles against Ar Fox and Leon Ruff. Wow, a tag match, and then. Title versus title, winner takes all. Austin Theory defending the Evolve title against WWN champion JD Drake. Did they get it right? It sounds like a pretty decent card. Uh, okay. I, uh, I'm, you know what? Evolve is one of those promotions where 
even if you think they didn't do things right, they pull off quite the show. Right. I, I don't think they're they're going to disappoint. I, I think if anything, they're setting themselves up to to outshine those uh, interpromotional matches. Right. That were sanctioned by by the WWE. So. Well, that's that's my next question though. Mm-hmm. So here's 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 where I kind of throw a thorn in things potentially and be the Debbie Downer here because. <laughs> We had, we have, we had these situations before. Sure. Where we have a live show, and what gets put on the network is only part of the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. Do you think WWE is going to do that? Do you think WWE is going to be like, okay, only these three matches, and it's going to be an hour long special, or is this going to be one of those things where they're like, you know what, we're going to go all out and we're going to give you. All the matches. It is to my understanding that for this particular event, they are going to show all of those matches. Okay. Which is, it's it's big. It's big in the way of WWE. Because again, they don't do stuff like this normally. Mm-hmm. Like, just like Matt said, it's usually, <laughs> it's usually um, cut to shit. And yeah. You, and you get these, you know, one hour specials or what have you. So, that I th- that's what makes me say what I just previously said. I think... The way they they set this card up, you get all that young talent, and they're mm. they're gonna give them a chance to shine. Yeah, and you know it 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 is so convenient that something like this. I know this was promoted and booked, you know, months ago, like six months ago or what have sure, you. Sure. But I find it, I still find it very convenient that they have this situation built up, and it is reminiscent of what AEW just did. Now, I'm not siding with AEW like they're the fucking end all be all because I don't think that, but. Right, right. Um, I could see where a lot of people automatically would think like, "Oh man, the WWE is just trying to mock them." Or, sure. or you know, and to be fair, to play devil's devil's advocate here, you know, it, it they have done stuff like that before. Yeah. You know, and and let's face it, you have you have Mr. McMahon who is uh, just kind of out of touch with things. Sometimes he comes across as like, "Hey, those the kids are doing it these days. Let's do that." You know, mm-hmm. yeah, whatever the story is, uh, Evolve is going to put on a hell of a show. Right. And you know it sucks that the WWE has to be involved, but I'm I'm looking for one hell of a show from those guys. And if you guys are not familiar with Evolve, please take the time and watch that show. If you don't watch any other Evolve show because you don't have access or, or refuse to buy a pay per view or whatever because you're afraid it's going to be shit wrestling. For those of you who have the WWE Network or have the the mind your mind open enough to sit and watch stuff on the network please 20x20crew.com slash podcast slash wwe network that's yeah. all one word get yourself a subscription to the wwe network and check out that evolve show you will not be disappointed i promise you and I, I again i hope that they do air the whole thing i mean i'm personally not worried about it because i have wwn live right you'll you'll get the whole show regardless <laughs> But uh, I would love for for those who don't, again, like you said, don't have that because for one reason or another, I, I hope that they do showcase it, um, the whole thing. I, I do feel a little bit better that they will because this has been kind of an ongoing thing since 2015 that they want independent wrestling to be put on the WWE Network. So, yeah, they talked to quite a few promotions to get, the, get in bed with them. So. Right. So, I mean, it, it would... It would be in their best interest then, if that's the case, to show the whole match and, and give everybody an opportunity to. Uh, I tell you showcase what, and, and, and any of our listeners out there who who have any intention of following through and actually watching the Evolve show, please, please do so, and I'll tell you why. The WWE has their ratings metrics just like everybody else. Wouldn't it be some shit if we had enough people? Take serious, take serious advantage of the opportunity to watch these this young roster, this young company do what they do best. Outperform your traditional WWE shows on yeah. their own fucking network. That would be a thing of beauty in my eyes. So please take the time, watch Evolve. Absolutely, and again, Evolve is going to take place July thirteenth from the twenty three hundred Arena in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, hopefully, Philly, you guys sold out of the arena this time. God damn, man. Just, you guys I'm, are embarrassing me over here. I, I don't know, and I'm, I'm taking all the shots I can. <laughs> I love you, Philly. I do love Philly. Um, 
We did say it was a busy weekend. It's going to, you know, you got you got Sunday as well. Uh, Sunday, you have Extreme Rules. That uh, takes place on Sunday, July 14th from Welsh Fargo Center, also in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I'm not, we're not going to go through the card because I really don't care about the whole card. Yeah, let's not. But uh, you made a, an interesting an interesting remark about The Undertaker. So on the July 8th episode of Raw. Of Monday Night Raw. What, 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 what is it, Roman Reigns in a match? Or there's a match that... No, I think it's it's either Shane McMahon and or the Scottish psychopath himself. Drew McIntyre? I think it's one of those guys in a match. And if The Undertaker gets involved in the match, he loses his spot at Extreme Rules. Okay. And that's the stipulation. And I had told Matt before we started recording the episode, I think for my money, this is how they get The Undertaker out of showing up at Extreme Rules to wrestle. So you think they, they use him to sell tickets? Why not? <laughs> that's, Why not? That's shady, man. It is shady. <laughs> but you know what? Let's go back. Let's go yeah. back in time. <laughs> let's, go, let's go back in time to a previous episode. And I, you know... I know where you're going with this. Pardon my 40-year-old mind, but in one of our previous episodes, we were kind of fantasy booking The Undertaker. Yep. And what did I tell you guys? What better way to get people interested in your product again than to have Undertaker show up and really not do shit? Just have him show up. You even mentioned at house shows. At house shows. At at random. Yeah. Make sure he's unannounced. Make sure it doesn't get leaked. Sneak his ass in the building Mm -hmm. and then have him show up. He doesn't have to do anything. He just comes out and, and just, he's the dead man. That's it. Yeah. And then you tease him, you tease him, you tease him. Uh, I think they're beyond that point by now, quite honestly. I, I don't think I don't. I think if they went to go ahead and try and do it now, mm-hmm. it's not going to have the same effect because they lost all that momentum. But regardless of me saying that, I think that's what they're trying to do here now. <laughs> is it, like, you know, we're gonna he's gonna be in a tag match. Yeah. With Roman Reigns, it's going to be the best damn thing in the world at Extreme Rules, only on pay per view. <laughs> and then the fucking Monday before it happens, yeah, he they make sure he gets fucked out of his spot, one way or another. And then you see all the fucking tickets go on StubHub, oh, <laughs> you know, and they're stuck with it. Oh man, that but, is. But at that point, they, but at that point, they don't care because those tickets are sold. Those tickets, tickets are sold. So, you're right. You're right. What do you do the next month though? I don't know, but for my money, I think he that's... He shows up unannounced. Uh, well... <laughs> you do it again. It, yeah, it's a possibility. Yeah. I'm, I'm not saying, you know... I, I, I wouldn't knock it. If it works, it, it works. But, you know, for my money, it, it doesn't... It, it, it has lost a lot of its, its yeah. effect for me, if it happens now. If that's what they're trying to do now with him, you know... Let me ask you a question. Yeah. What is the harm in advertising him for Extreme Rules... In a non-wrestling role. What is the harm? Why couldn't you sit there and offer like a VIP package to people in attendance who, who decide that they want to pay for a ticket to see you? Right. And be like, hey, you pay an extra whatever for your seat and you're going to get a guaranteed ticket to have a meet and greet with The Undertaker. Picture taken with The Undertaker or something like that. What, I'd, what is I'd the, buy a ticket. What is the harm? I'd buy a ticket. You know, you're still getting yeah. them to buy a ticket to your event that sells a ticket, and then you're offering them that. It's like you still get to see the Undertaker. Yeah, he's not wrestling, but let's be realistic about it. Unless you live in Saudi Arabia, you don't want to fucking see Undertaker wrestle. Right. Okay. So you you say that, and it, it's funny because there's a show that I I personally can't make because there's a there's a I have a prior engagement I have to attend to, but Warrior Wrestling. Which okay. is which is uh, based out of uh, South Side Chicago, South Suburbs of Chicago. Yep. They're putting on a show, and they have a package for a hundred dollars. You get to meet, I think it's like a total of like thirty different people, uh, meet and greets, picture, and something signed for a hundred bucks. Okay. And one of those people is a guy. That, the main person that they're advertising isn't wrestling. It's Mick Foley. There you go. So, <laughs> it's like they will sell tickets. I, I I think it's. Easy booking. Yeah. You know, you want to sell tickets? That's definitely a way to sell a ticket. And with WWE, you can charge a lot. They could they could have charged more if they wanted to for that, uh, for that package. Yeah. 
100 bucks to meet 30 different people. I think it's 30. It's it's up there. Dude, you go to see Mick Foley at a convention. Yeah. You're paying at least 25 for him alone. Yeah. Now, you're telling me you get to see 30 wrestlers. And Mick Foley. And Mick Foley. Right. For 100 bucks. Mm-hmm. Dude, take my money. And they're just, they're just trying to raise money for, for you know, kids' tuition, so they claim. Mm. Yeah. Mm. We're, we're not going to go into that. Yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> <laughs> let's not do that. <laughs> I got to look there, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. I got to look. <laughs> no. Joe and I grew up in the same area, so it's I I understand what he's saying. There. Um, but trust, my, trust me, those kids can fucking afford. <laughs> they don't need any help. <laughs> but, but the point I was trying to make though is that they're not trying to get themselves out of the red. Or not. I, I ought to go just to fucking tell McFoley like these fucking kids don't need any help. <laughs> Little fucking rich bastards. I'm sorry. <laughs> not talking. <laughs> Hey, Rich, Mick Foley's a nice guy. I met him before. He's Mick Foley's a nice. Guy. He, yeah. I, I want him to be a nice guy. He's he's do, very do. down to earth. He's very very approachable. Yeah. I, I'm I, I'm assuming his daughter is going to be at the the AEW show. She she seems to be at every major wrestling show these days. Oh, that's right. Yeah, because I she's she's super tall. You can't miss her. Yeah. And <laughs> I was watching. Uh, she was she was obviously at at um, Dull or Nothing because she was in the front row. She was in the front row again for Fighter Fest, but she was on. She was not. On the hard camera side, right? But like when they're panning, and I was like, "That's tall, yeah, tall blonde. You can't yeah, miss you her. You can't miss her." So um, she probably would be at that show too because she's definitely a huge elite fan. But yeah, I would love to have met McFoley, and I'm super bummed I can't make the show. I mean, Penta, Ray, Ray, Ray Phoenix is going to be there. Yeah, yeah. You know, just a plethora of people. Tessa Blanchard, you get to meet Brian Cage. You know, just a number of people. Tons of talent from Mexico. Tons of talent. Uh, Michael Elgin is going to be at the no show. Oh shit! Yeah, I've met him too. He's an awesome fucking guy. Yeah. So I mean, it's you get to be this uh, a huge, huge roster of, of people for a hundred bucks. But yeah, going back to the initial question, that 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 totally makes sense. If you want, even if you wanted to bring somebody shitty back like Goldberg, See, he doesn't it, have to wrestle. It's the same principle. You yeah. do, hey, because you know pe- there's going to be people out there that, that take advantage of that deal. Yeah, you know, even if it's someone shitty like Goldberg. Yeah, this is be this is the perfect role for also somebody like like Hulk Hogan or things of that nature. Like you want to bring Hulk Hogan back, you don't need to fucking bring him on TV. No, don't need to find him. You know, like oh, where are we going to put Hogan at? Nowhere. Let him sign some <laughs> autographs. Sell some fucking TV. T-shirts, you know, like that's it. That's what. That's part of the reason you brought him. That's why. That's part of the reason you signed him to begin with, anyway, right? To sell some fucking merch. But yeah, I mean, it it, it totally makes sense. Hundred dollars, brother. <laughs> you know, I mean, the WWE. I can totally see that actually being a price. Oh, never, never mind WWE. Him alone, like that's I, his actual price at C two E two. Uh, I had the opportunity to, you know, meet him and stuff, and yeah. I, I didn't take advantage. Okay. Uh, but it was a hundred dollars, and he would sign uh, one thing. Okay. And he was three hours late <laughs> because he double booked himself. Okay. He was at like some country club or something, and where he took part in like a like a meet and greet dinner. Like, you paid so much, and then you got to kind of, like, hang out and have food, but also meet him. Sure. And then he was there three hours later than he wanted to be, but he what it was was people kept coming to see him. So he was like, 100 bucks ahead? Hell yeah, come on, keep the money coming. And then he finally decided to show up to C2E2. <laughs> and when he got there, the line yeah. was, like, fucking gigantic. And uh, they, I know they end up turning people away that year, but... Um, he left. He still left a lot of people fucking happy, man. I, that's the one thing I'll say. Is uh, he definitely knows how to please his fans? I'll, I'll say that much. Hundred bucks. Hundred bucks to, to check out Hulk Hogan. No, thank you. <laughs> there was a guy. Uh, I met him in the elevator. So it's a hundred bucks for for him to meet you, you to meet him and get one thing signed. This fucking guy had five different items signed. So he spent five hundred dollars in the matter of you know less than an hour, I would say, to meet and greet with Hulk Hogan five different times, uh, and most of them were action figures, in, you know, still in box. But I I couldn't believe my eyes. I told I I told the guy I was like, man, you're a better person than I am because. 
There's no way in hell I'm paying a hundred dollars to see Hulk Hogan, let alone five. <laughs> I would pay a hundred dollars like a spit in his face. Oh shit! You hear that, Hulk? I was like, you can sign my fucking loogie. We're coming for you, brother. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. <laughs> what you gonna do? <laughs> I was like, here, I got something you can sign. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, getting back to it, Mick Foley's a really nice person. <laughs> yeah, no. And Warrior Wrestling, that again, that's just to me that's it's common sense. Common sense, yeah. man. So Black Label Pro, they they bring in um, they Barry got, Windham. Yeah, Barry Windham. Now uh, they got uh, Ricky the, the Dragon, Dragon. Steamboat yeah. coming. Uh, pretty soon, I think uh, Psychosis is going to be there. Yep. Dude, I mean, they, they started off with smaller guy. I mean, uh, smaller name guys like Dealer Brown, who's not as popular as the other guys as far as wrestling goes. But I mean, still. Somebody. Congratulations, D'Lo, on your new job. If I'm not mistaken, he is a full-time producer for Impact Wrestling now. Oh, that's good. He's, yeah. he's got a job. <laughs> uh, he's no he's no longer bouncing at uh, <laughs> at the the strip club out in Vegas for uh, Godfather. The Godfather. Yeah. But his head is still bouncing. <laughs> Out of everybody who doesn't have a Funko Pop that should have one, what the fuck, D'Lo? Like. Figure some shit out. Get yourself a, a pop gun. <laughs> Someone make a custom D'Lo Brown pop. You, you, you. Actually, I know, I know, I know the right guy. Uh, I'm gonna, I, go. I might have to have it done. <laughs> that might, that might be our new mascot. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, again, we're watching the uh, G1 climax. We just got done watching a hell of a match between Kenta and Kota, Abushi. Uh, I'm not gonna give any results. We won't want you to watch it yourself. But somebody uh, won. Somebody won. <laughs> Somebody gave some points. Hell of a match. Um, speaking of matches, one more thing about Extreme Rules. Alistair Black. Yes. He's been calling out the WWE locker room. I wouldn't know because I haven't watched fucking WWE television in quite some time. But please, tell me. Well, I, I got something to say about that, too. Not not you in particular, but just in uh, television in general. Okay. Uh, but Alistair Black, he's been calling out the WWE locker room. Nobody's been answering. Somebody finally answered the, 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 the challenge. We don't know who. Alistair Black doesn't want to know who until it's Extreme Flair. Rules. <laughs> <laughs> What's your take on Alistair Black and uh, and a mystery opponent? Who do you who do you got? First of all, that's good booking. I don't know who came up with that idea, but that's good booking. Yeah. That that level of intrigue. Hell yeah. Uh, who who do I think it's going to be? I don't. Man, I really couldn't tell you. I really couldn't tell you. I mean, uh, you know, obviously you had brought up Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt. Making an in-ring return. That yeah. makes a lot of sense to me. But are they thinking like that? Probably not. What about a repackaged Cesaro? Because remember, Cesaro is now on his own. Right. Uh, I guess. I think, I think, quite honestly, no matter who it is, just because the way they want to roll with Aleister Black, I think he's going to win. Mm. No matter who it is, I don't know, man. Just because it's the WWE, I mean, shit. We just talked Hulk Hogan, like, yeah. Even if it was jokingly, and then someone else comes out, like, I could see them pulling some stupid shit like that. You know, you never know. I mean, it's the same company that built up the the the, the special guest referee in the stomping oh, ground match, Jesus, and ended up being fucking, fucking Lacey Evans. Nightmare. I mean, yeah. So it, it's uh, it could be that. I'm intrigued by it, but I'm also I'm also worried about it because again, it, like you said, it is WWE, and you just you just don't know how they're gonna book this. So far, so good with Alistair Black, and it's a shame that yeah. if, if they, they if they do fuck it up. But again, so far, good booking. I do like the mystique about it. I do like the fact that uh, he definitely has a heel persona working for him right now. But it's also just uh, that level of who's gonna stop me? Who's gonna be the force that stops me? And uh, the one thing that I would say, I wish, I wish they would have answered the challenge prior, leading up to this, uh-huh. had him go through the roster a little bit. I'm not saying that every through everybody, but have him have him beat people, have him yeah. establish himself as a legit powerhouse, and then you know nobody can beat me. You know, I'm I, you know because he's on a roll. Yeah. yeah, who's gonna who's gonna answer the challenge, and then somebody leaves the mystery clue of oh, it's gonna be you know somebody to answer the question the call so i would have done it that way personally but uh i mean overall it's not i don't think they you know it's it's a huge it's a lo- it's like a, a complete loss but uh it definitely loses a little bit of steam for me i miss alistair black i i will definitely take one for the team and watch the the pay-per-view more than likely as it happens okay 
I won't be able to unless I would. So thanks, thanks for taking one for yeah, the team. You, you also get AJ Styles versus Ricochet, which hopefully is a good match. I, I like your word. It intrigues me. Yeah, we're, we're no longer. Me and Matt have decided we're no longer allowed to get excited for WWE matches that we would probably <laughs> otherwise <laughs> like. Yeah, you know, AJ Styles versus Ricochet and and any other company. Take, take my, my money. money. Yeah. All day long, but uh, in WWE, it's like yeah, I, I, I hope it's good. I hope I hope it works. <laughs> um, more likely because he's back with uh, Gallows and Anderson, they're gonna pull some bullshit. Uh, it's, probably, yeah. it's probably gonna end in uh, disqualification or something like that. You know, we'll see. That's this weekend. That's the uh, July thirteenth to July fourteenth. Like I said, ladies and gentlemen, it is it is a busy time. You know, yeah, yeah. The, the G1 is here. You know, uh, WWE's got their show. Get off my lawn. Get a, if you see Get Off My Lawn, Hiroshi Tanahashi. I made the point. <laughs> he probably didn't leave his hotel in Dallas because he, he hates Gaijin so much. Yep. And then on his way to and from the arena and the hotel and the airport, he probably blindfolded himself as he was driven to, the, to each location because he just... I just picture him having, he's like one of those people that has a, a bottle of hand sanitizer at all times. Yeah. You know, like, oh, you're a foreigner. <laughs> you know, you can see him like, he came to the ring right now, ladies and gents. He came to the ring uh, for his match, and he was like slapping hands with fans and stuff, and keep in mind, they are in Dallas, Texas. For what it's worth, man, he, he doesn't let it show. He he's trying to be the showman. He comes out and and he'll he'll slap hands with fans no matter what you look like. But the moment you give him a mic and and ask his opinion of uh, foreigners, man, he left. He definitely lets you fucking have it. But not Okada. Okada's cool. Okada was cool. I I, I didn't officially meet him, but I did see him at a at a show. And uh, him and Naito were the same thing. Like they were bumping fists with uh, fans that were not paying as they were walking. <laughs> and it was the the people that were with them. Yeah. Like bodyguards like, hey, like yeah, you gotta stop. go. Stop doing that. <laughs> like they didn't pay. Like don't don't be <laughs> Like they didn't give a shit. They was like, "Hey, you want to you want to see me?" Like that's cool. Like they weren't stopping to take pictures with you, but you know, Naito was giving you fist bumps and same thing with Okada. So like, yeah, it was pretty cool. I mean, I I didn't I didn't go up to them, but I did see them from afar. Definitely got old school versus new school as we see Tanahashi versus Okada, the main event. The main event of the first ever G1 Climax show in uh, in the United States is this is the is this the right call? Okada and Tanahashi. I'm gonna say yeah. Yeah, because uh, this is one of those matches, as many times as they have wrestled each other, Yeah, I don't think they've ever had a bad match. No. You know? Yeah. And I know Tanahashi's getting up there, and you know he's he's not 100%, but I, I guarantee you, Okada's going to make him look like fucking gold. I That's st- the kind of talent that he is. Yeah, and I still think Okada takes it, because fuck Tanahashi. Yeah, I, <laughs> I agree. But yeah, like I said, ladies and gentlemen, that is... Ladies and gentlemen, I just saw the worst thing I could possibly have ever seen. Somebody made a hybrid picture of John Cena. It's a giant head. Giant head. It's John Cena and Kazuchika Okada. Whoever made that, I, I expect your wrestling card on my on my desk yeah, first thing in the morning. Yeah, that's, that's a fucking pink slip right there. <laughs> uh, that's that's a serious no-no. What um, the, I, don't, I don't understand... I don't fucking understand that. <laughs> like, how do you even compare the two? <laughs> Good God. Yeah, man. who would invite that guy? Who would invite that fucking guy? He's one of those guys that probably fucking bought his ticket from StubHub for like $3 million. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I'm going to the show. <laughs> Bring my fucking John Okada hat head with me. Uh, he's also probably wearing a fanny pack. Hey guys. man, they're back in style. Yeah, yeah so 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 I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> but like I said, there's a there's a plethora of, of pro wrestling out there for you to enjoy. We're still playing catch up, and uh, we are man. We got a lot of wrestling <laughs> to catch up on. And uh, and and we're gonna start by uh, by checking out this match, pay a little bit of bills. We'll be back with part two in just a little bit. Stay tuned. This episode of the 20 by 20 Ring Crew has been brought to you by PodCoin. Joe, if you're anything like me, you love podcasts, but it wouldn't be better if you got paid while, while doing it? Absolutely. Fellas, ladies, children of all ages, you can now be paid to listen to us, the 20 by 20 Ring Crew. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Sit there, enjoy Matt and I, go back and forth about professional wrestling all day, all night. Now, it's not straight out cash. 
you'll get paid in pod coins, but you can change those pod coins in for stuff like gift cards to Starbucks, Target, Best Buy, what have you. Or if you're uh, anything not like me, <laughs> you uh, you can donate those pod coins <laughs> for, to charity. To charity. So. Which is, I mean, that's always a good thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. So all you got to do is visit us at 20x22.com slash podcast slash pod coin. That was a little bit of a tongue twister. It is. Again, that's 20x20crew.com slash podcast slash pod coin. And don't forget, use the invite code 20x20pod when you sign up for the pod coin app. It's going to give you 300 free coins right off the bat the moment you sign up for free. And pod coin is available for both iOS and Android. And you get to listen to not just us, but a a plethora of podcasts at your leisure and the more you listen the more money you make it's that simple folks 20x20crew.com slash podcast slash pod coin get yourself signed up today remember invite code 20x20pod for 300 free coins and as always we will see, see you, you in the ring. ring welcome back ladies and gentlemen thank you for letting us take some time pay some bills uh, we hope you have been enjoying us on the podcoin app once again 20x20crew.com slash podcast slash podcoin sign up with us use the promo code 20x20 pod and get yourself 200 free pod coins to start you off we highly recommend if you're going to listen to us these days get paid for it do the smart thing be smart like the boys get paid to listen to your 20 by 20 ring crew coming back um you know we we did a lot of hype for for events that uh that are about to happen um i want to talk a little bit about one that has already happened okay Uh, you and i both did not watch this uh but we are we are going to watch it yes and that is the 17th installment of slammiversary Impact Wrestling, um, which has had a variety of names over the years, uh, but is <laughs> current, yeah, is currently uh, Impact Wrestling. You and I started talking about this incarnation of the company, yeah, uh, quite a while ago, and we were both excited because of Don Callis and Scott Demore taking the reins of the company, rebuilding. Mm-hmm. Rebuilding from all the bullshit with Jeff Jarrett. Rebuilding from all the bullshit with Pop TV and different investors. Dixie Carter. Dixie Carter. Uh, yeah. Bill Corrigan at one point. Yeah. It, it, they they have just had probably one of the worst runs of luck seemingly uh, in in recent wrestling history. I would say. Yeah. When I think about this company, I always think about the 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 phrase "You reap what you sow." Mm-hmm. These these guys the, they they continue to be like the little engine that could and and to me that's even that is an understatement because this company is doing wrestling right for anyone that has not caught impact in quite some time you really are missing a good wrestling show I I am not a fan of everybody on their roster but I could say that about any uh, I was gonna say any yeah. roster yeah. from any company that's gonna happen overall like they have their shit together. And it's it's kind of a shame because they should have a bigger platform. A- at least that's my opinion. Mm-hmm. I would love to see them have more TV time somewhere else other than the uh, <laughs> Pursuit Channel. The Pursuit Channel. Thank yeah. you. Well, here here's here's where I, I mean we're watching right now. Uh, the G1 climax is over. Currently, right now we have Impact Wrestling Bash at the Brewery, which took place outside of Dallas on July. 5th. Fifth, it's, it's on Impact Plus. Yes. Impact Plus is their streaming service that you can get. Uh, it used to be called the Global Wrestling Network. That no longer exists. It is now Impact Plus. You do have to re-sign up for it. I found that out. Um, they have their they have these special shows that they do, and they air it on Impact Wrestling. Well, or sorry, they they air it they, and they air it on Impact Plus. Well, wouldn't it make sense? Are you got your Pursuit Channel time slot? Uh huh. Yeah, it, you might want to see if you might get another TV deal or, or TV uh, show. Sure. But in the meantime, why not use your streaming service? Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, do a weekly show. Say, hey, you want you know you want more Impact Wrestling? Check out Impact 
whatever you want to call the show, you know, every whatever day of the week, and it's going to be aired exclusively on Impact Plus. The same way that NXT is exclusive to the WWE Network. It's, it, it does two things. It gives you more airtime, and you're advertising your your product. I mean, it's it's a good way to get st- streaming, you know, in, uh, on you know, more streaming subscriptions to have more content, including a weekly TV show, if you, if you can do it. Yeah, uh, it's a no-brainer. And you know what? I think out of most of the smaller companies... Like they have quite the working capital. Oh yeah. So I, I'm I'm kind of puzzled as to why this isn't a thing with them. But that kind of seems to be the story of Impact Wrestling. It's there's a lot of potential in the company, but yet for some reason it just doesn't always trans. Like something gets lost in translation yeah. with them. Right. Um, but Slammiversary is their signature event. It's one of them. One of them. Yeah. Uh, For me, it is the signature event because it seems to obviously have the um, quite the lineage. You've got seventeen years of it, um, seventeen editions of it, but definitely one of their core, one of their core events, Mm -hmm. uh, one of their most important events. Yeah, this and Slam Reverse, or sorry, this and Bound for Glory and Bound for Glory are the are the two show main shows. I want to thank the guys over at WrestlingInc.com real quick because uh, I'm using their article on Slammiversary Okay, as a, a little bit of reference here, you start off the event with a four way, a fatal four way between uh, Willie Mack, TJP, Jake Christ, and Trey Miguel. This is exactly what I'm talking about. You have four up and coming young wrestlers, with the exception of Willie Mack. I'm I'm not sure. I think Willie Mack's probably the oldest out of the bunch. Okay, if I had to guess, but he's an up and coming wrestler uh, to most people, and you start off the show this way. And f- from from all the reviews and, and feedback I've seen online, it was quite a fucking match. Obviously, we've got TJP in there now, who's uh, fresh off his stint in uh, WWE as part of 205 Live. Right. But this is one of those matches that anywhere else, for any other company, for some odd reason, it's a lot more accessible than this one. Uh, I, I, you know, we, we just, you know, we talked about the whole streaming service ordeal. Y- yes, they have a YouTube presence. I don't know if you're familiar with their YouTube presence, uh, but when they, every time they add content, uh, mm-hmm. usually they'll say, it, it's like very catchy. It's like, uh, you'll see a news article, like, check out the, the chilling beginning of this week's impact. <laughs> okay. But it works. It gets you to go and watch some footage. Sure. You know? But for me, for what they're doing and all the effort that they're putting into this promotion, it should be bigger. Yeah. And, and I don't under... I, it, that still puzzles me. Like, why? Why isn't it bigger? I can't figure that out. You've got Don Callis and Scott Demore running things, which is a huge step in the right direction mm-hmm. in the way of booking and management. Uh, you've got quite the the little young roster on your hands. Mixing with good veterans. Exactly. What say you? What what's missing? What what's lost in translation here? What's missing is the bad taste in everybody's mouth. Is uh, it? It's still there. <coughs> you think it's still I, I, there? For a lot of people, a lot of pe- for a lot of people that I talk to, it is unfortunately. You know, it's it's that company that did a lot, made a lot of bad decisions, and that that goes to show you the ignorance of the wrestling fans sometimes. Uh, they don't know when to, with the exception of the WWE, they don't know when to forgive. Not necessarily forget, but forgive and say, you know what, let me give this another chance. It was hard for me. It definitely, it definitely was a, a change of pace to to go back to Impact Wrestling, and and for me, the the, the shittiest part about them is the fact that they're on pursuit. Yeah, I don't get that channel, and that's another thing too that's missing is a good TV deal. Yeah, um, and, and the whole Twitch thing is great, but it has you you have to watch it as it airs. You get, yeah, you gotta watch it live. You can't you can't sit and, and watch it as your le- at your leisure. And like I don't know about you, but for me, it's hard. Mm-hmm. It's hard to do that. What no matter what day of the week it's on. Well, it's, you know, Friday nights at eight o'clock. Yeah. Or whatever, or eight, you know, nine eight central, and or or the Friday re, the, or the Monday. Re, the replay is Monday. Monday from five cent, five p.m. central. Now, if you're like me, you're you're just getting home from work, or you're not home from work yet, right? And that's not a good time slot to be watching pro wrestling. So I don't see the harm 
and and having it streamed. I mean, take the Hulu approach. Put it on there for a week or so. Yeah. You know, give give the fans enough time to watch it uh, when they can, and then when you know new episode comes in, replace it. Yep. It's also a good time to advertise for your Impact Plus app. You know, you can watch it on Twitch for a week, but if you couldn't make it, hey, go to Impact Plus, sign up, become a become a, a subscriber today, and you get you know that episode as well as you know all past Impact episodes, you know for a low price. So I figure how much they charge, but that's to me it's easy advertisement right there too. So it's that's that's not a problem. That that's what's missing is a good. TV deal. Other than that, I like the roster. I like the uh, I like the, the routes that they're taking with their with their with the product. I, I still I still don't know how the over the top TV uh, you know wrestling angles are working for them because they still do those stuff like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, I mean, some people they like it. You know, I think a lot of people are kind of in agreement that they don't. Okay. So there's shit like that they still haven't completely taken away from yet. But overall, they've established themselves as a legit contender as far as being able to compete with companies like WWE or AEW or, or ROH because of the past transgressions that they've committed. It's left to, left them with a, with a bad reputation. And... Even though they're they're doing mostly good now, they're left with that uh, bad taste in everybody's mouth that they still can't fully get rid of. That's a damn shame. Uh, the card goes on. You've got RVD versus Moose, and and Moose uh, ends up winning the match. Oh, he beats RVD. Okay. Yeah, he beats RVD. It goes about fourteen minutes, but it, it's it again like from top to bottom. You have eight matches, right? Eight yeah. matches on the card. The the booking is. Pretty much spot on. I don't think I would have done anything different. Okay. Um, so, like, first was the four-way with Willie Mack. Right. Uh, the second match is uh, the North, which is Ethan Page and Josh Alexander. They're the current tag title title holders. They defeated LAX. Uh, uh, that's Ortiz and Santana with Conan at ringside. And the Rascals, which is Desmond Xavier and Zachary Wentz with Trey Miguel. Less than ten minutes for that match. But still, a fucking barn burner of a match. Yeah. Then you go to Eddie Edwards versus Killer Cross in a first blood match. So you go from a high-paced, fast-paced four-way match to a fast-paced three-way tag team match to now a definitely a more roughneck-style, hardcore-style match between Eddie Edwards and Killer Cross. Mm-hmm. Good pace. Then you hop on, and and the moose moose versus RVD happens. Your moose ain't flying around that ring. No, he's not. Yeah. So, but uh, he he knows how to heal it up. Yes, he does. You've got him going up against RVD, Mister Fucking Pay Per View himself. Yeah. So he knows what he's doing in that he ring. He knows what he's doing. And then you you make history. Yeah. The first time you have the first ever four way women's monsters ball match. For those of you who are not familiar with what a monsters ball match is, please take the time and watch yourself. <laughs> yeah, an impact monsters ball match. A very brutal match. A lot of uh, a lot of weaponry and hardcore uh, style in there. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there's been maybe one or two mediocre ones in there, but for the most part, sure. you're, you're looking at a pretty good fucking time. Uh, and this is the first ever women's, and it's a four-way. And what better way to fucking uh, set it off when uh, than with the likes of Sue Young, Rosemary, Jessica Havoc, and the current champ, Ty Valkyrie. Fuck, dude. Definitely uh, the baddest of the bad as far as female wrestlers go. And all pro wrestling, I mean, that's the right lineup, too. That's what kills me. Like, you have... so. Uh, and again, I'm not trying to play favorites here. WWE, they have their women's roster. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying there's there's not any legit workers on there, because there is. Oh, of course, yeah. I mean, they're few and far between, but there are, they're there. Sure. You've got AEW, who, you know, they're just, they're fresh out of the water. You've got, they've got their, their, their women's uh, roster, and it mm-hmm. seems to be ever-evolving, like, yeah. between the international talent that they bring over and, and their 
their actual core roster. Right. Uh, you got a lot of variety, but we're talking the impact knockouts. Yeah. For anyone's money, they're not your run-of-the-mill women's wrestlers. If I had to compare them to anybody, any other roster, I would say probably Beyond Wrestling's women's roster, where a lot of them could go head-to-head with men in intergender matches and, and just do hardcore matches and uh, things that you don't typically think of women getting into. Yeah. But that's that's your that's the the match that happens pretty much in the middle of the show and it's it's a history making match. From what I read, it's it was a fucking huge huge win for them. It's a good way to uh, to showcase to establish yourself as a place where women wrestling is respected and thrive. And thrive. Uh, it's a way to promote your product as a whole. And it's, it's a way to get that live crowd into it even more with something like this. You make, you make a, good, a good point with your statement there. Respected. Their women's roster, definitely respected. Yeah. You can't say that about most other women rosters. I mean, let's face it. You've got a lot of people who sleep on organizations like Shine mm-hmm. and Stardom and... Um, I know I'm missing another big one out there. Shimmer. Uh, Shimmer, thank you. Yeah. Uh, they're all fucking great organizations. Shine just had a show on uh, on the 6th. Yeah. So. And th- those rosters should be respected mm-hmm. like the, the, the impact um, knockouts there. Right. Uh, but for whatever reason... It doesn't work that way. I'm, I, I, you know, don't, and, and uh, don't kill me. I'm, I'm just a messenger. <laughs> but uh, let's face it, you're run of the no wrestling fan. They know the impact knockouts over or women who work in um, Shine and Stardom and Shimmer, and, which is it's unfortunate. Yeah. You go from that match, and then you go into another championship match where Rich Swan defends the X Division Championship against Johnny Impact. You can't ask for much, much more in the way of a. Like for me, this would be one of those dream matches on the following contest, on our on our YouTube channel. Two guys with very similar styles, a lot of high pace, high high high, octane type, fighting wrestling, but also a mixture of good mat wrestling. And uh, a lot of heavy kicks throughout. <laughs> so, by both men. And then you have the uh, your heavyweight title being defended. You have the Impact World Championship held by Brian Cage. Is he the machine in Impact? Yeah. Okay. I so, mean, he actually comes out in like a machine gun. Uh, right, right. And uh, he's going up against uh, Big Mike, Michael Elgin. Big Mike. First off, his, his uh, multi-year stint in Japan. Yeah. Again, you, you've got... You've got the depth in your roster. Mm-hmm. For me, I'm I'm not completely sold on Brian Cage as your heavyweight champ. Right. But with Michael Elgin now lurking around, hopefully he gets a, a, a title run out of all this. Right. But you you're like with all these matches, you have that you have it set up where all this talent is either being pushed already or about to be pushed in a very positive manner. And I think that's one of their biggest strengths with this company, is that they they keep doing that. They keep that that machine rolling, and you you don't you don't really get that with a lot of other companies. Uh, that's one thing I'm I'm definitely proud of uh, when it comes to Impact Wrestling and what they're putting out there. The final match again, we're gonna make history here for a, a multitude of reasons. Mm-hmm. Final match was an intergender match as the main event, so kudos to them for doing that. For, for even having the match. For even having the match, right. let alone putting it over all their other matches, including titles. <laughs> yeah. Um, you have the draw himself, Sammy Callahan, taking on Tessa Blanchard. And, you know, we, we spoke about over-the-top storylines and what have you. That wasn't this storyline. Nothing about this was over-the-top. It, it it was uh, it was a, a classic uh, arch- archetypal storyline when it comes to professional wrestling. Yeah, and it was just played out by in the way of an intergender match. 
but it worked. It all worked. I'm I'm excited. I still want to see it. I you know I, if if we haven't said so before, I, both Matt and I were excited to watch this as soon as it, it was announced. And, yeah. And the, that's the way they announced it was. The first match that uh, was booked was the four way monsters ball match, and mm-hmm. I was like, "Holy shit!" If that's the match they're beginning with, <laughs> you know, I'm excited to see what else they book. So, what I love about this the way they booked the intergender match is that it's an intergender match, but it was never booked as, as like an intergender. No, it was it was more of a, a grudge match. Yes, yeah. uh, if anything. So what was happening was. Uh, OVE, Ohio versus everything. They were doing what OVE does. And they had Scarlett Bordeaux in a situation where they were going to put a beating on her. And Tessa Blanchard just wasn't going to stand for it. And Sammy Callahan took exception to that. Didn't like somebody uh, interfering in his business. And, uh, yeah, declared war on Tessa Blanchard. Uh, that's what it was. This isn't a, uh, a chauvinistic thing that was, you want to stick our nose, your nose in our business? Well, now you and I got a problem. Yeah. And, and that's that's what it was. Um, is it in the main event because of the story built up? No, it's in the main event because it is an intergender match. It is huge. And, you know, anytime you do something like something like this, it is risky. Because, <laughs> You're very risky. Because people are not going to know how to take this. So what do they do? They, they just say, you know what, Tessa, Sammy, you're going to go on last. Uh, and you're it was gonna, a ballsy move. It's a very, it's a very, that's a very difficult decision to make, but the, uh, I'm really proud that they made it. And um, you know, I I haven't seen the match. It goes about 15 minutes, but from what I heard, it didn't it didn't uh, disappoint. Disappoint. So yeah, I mean, kudos to to Impact Wrestling. That right there, that right there is is not talk. You know, that is what you would call walking the walk. That's what I'm saying. You know what? We are putting our chips in women wrestling. And, you know, it starts with building a legit roster, which they have, and having a uh, legit show, which they do. And now put them, putting uh, those two in the main event, you know, with, with, with everything that's being done, you know, Brian Cage and Michael Elgin. That's a match that's been booked since the last pay-per-view when Brian Cage got hurt. Right. Uh, this is a grudge match, too. There's, there's definitely a lot of animosity. Same thing with Rich Swann and Johnny Impact. That's a grudge match. You know, the, you know nothing, though, that they put together was of more importance than Callahan and Blanchard. And you got two stars. They've helped, they've helped build Sammy Callahan as a star. They helped build Tessa Blanchard as a star. And they've both done you know, great things on the independent circuit. We see intergender matches all the time now in the independent circuit. Why not be out of, out of the main WWE, or sorry, with all the main, with all the mainstream pro wrestling companies that, that exist right now, they would be the first. Why not take that risk? Yeah, AEW has already come out and said you're probably not going to see intergender stuff from them. Okay. So there you go. I mean, I if. If if that doesn't tell you that that avenue is uh, open for the taking, I don't know what does. And I'm I'm glad they took it, and they took it with you know f- full stream ahead because yeah. full stream ahead because it is it is now the balls in their court, the balls in their hand, and uh, they're they're running away with that part of the business. Uh, if only they can get the rest of it off the ground, which it, I think I think it's going to take more time. I think there's still more people who are are having difficulty putting trust and faith into a product that has repeatedly disappointed them in the past. What's one thing you think they could do in the immediate to uh, change a lot of people's minds, whether it be big or small? I I really think uh, pushing digital streaming is a a platform that they, they could run with. But for me... If I'm Don Callis and Scott Demore, and and we you know we we absorbed and I know this is not nothing new for them as far as Impact Wrestling, but I would I wouldn't shy away from the past. I would take the Tom Ricketts approach. For those who don't know, Tom Ricketts is uh, one of the owners of the Chicago Cubs. Mm-hmm. When he bought that team, that team was basically a hundred hundred loss team. They were they were a bunch of fucking losers, <laughs> and that's coming from a Cubs fan, ladies and gentlemen. Tell me how you really feel, yeah. Matt. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's coming from a diehard Cubs fan. They were they they fucking stunk, and they came out and they said he came out and said a World Series is what we're aiming to do. 
That is that is World Series or bust. That is what our goal is, nothing less. But it's going to take time. You know, we need you guys to be patient with us. It's going there's going to be growing pains in all of this, but that is the goal. Every decision that we make is going towards the goal of winning a World Series. So Don Callis and Scott Moore should just be open with their with their audience. We know that Impact Wrestling has left a bad taste in everybody's mouth. And it's going to take time for us to earn your trust again. But if you give us a chance, we'll put on the best fucking wrestling show that we can possibly give you. If a company is willing to humble themselves to that point, to where they can openly admit, say, hey, we've, even though it's not necessarily their fault, but they, they've absorbed this company now, for them to be to say, you know, hey, we get it. We get it. There's been issues with the in the past. This is what we're striving to be. This is our mission statement. You know, this is what our plan is. And then continue to put on the best product, the best type of matches you can possibly put on. I think that's going to help bring people back to the show because right now, it's just uh, it's word of mouth. You know, right now it's, hey, Impact Wrestling is good again, says random guy on the internet. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's good enough for me. You know, I uh, again, you're, you're, you're on a bad network, which, again, that's not uh, Callus or Demore's fault. That is the owner's fault for doing that because they own that channel. They think, hey, let's, uh, let's go ahead and put it on this channel when it, it doesn't fit. Pursuit Channel... And pro wrestling just don't fit. It just doesn't make any sense. You know, you see, so you're at that disadvantage of having that, so you have to go based off your own word of mouth. You can't bank off of, hey, we're on a legit network, like back when they were on Spike TV. You know, we have tons of of of, of you know of ways to advertise because you're on a, on a company network like Viacom that owns you know 20 different channels that they, they can they can also advertise on you. For basically nothing because they own you. You know, now you're on pursuit. I don't know what else this, this company owns as far as channels go, but you're having a hard time promoting yourself. You know, you need people to, to come down to your shows. You, you, you know, right now you're banking off of live shows. For me, the best thing to do is to go out there and, and like you're a politician, start shaking hands, kissing babies, <laughs> and say, this is what Impact Wrestling is, and just be honest. Look, I get it. You're not an Impact Wrestling fan anymore. Give us time. We'll earn your trust back. Give us an opportunity. And uh, I think that's that's part of what's missing. Because right now, it's it's very much word of mouth. It's, uh, hey, Impact's good again. Oh, no, it's not. Bullshit. <laughs> you know, maybe I'll watch. Maybe I won't. But, uh, but yeah, I that's, uh, that's my long answer uh, to this whole... To this whole thing, I I really think uh, I really think it comes down to just just being honest with the fans and let them know, hey, forget it. This company's fucked up so many times. You don't trust us anymore, but uh, we're gonna earn that trust back if you uh, if you give us even the slightest chance. So let's let's uh, let's fantasy book here for a second. So now that Tessa Blanchard has main evented, yeah, uh, a pay per view for them and. An intergender match for them. How many belts do we put on Tessa Blanchard? I mean, do we truly add the uh, the X in X division and uh, open it up to intergender matches? Yeah. The X. What did What did the X stand for? What did the X division stand for? Back back way back 2002 when it introduced. No rules. No rules. No limits. Yeah. There's no weight classes. There's no limits. Therefore, it does, should not matter. What sex you claim to be? If you can go, you can go. Right, and and she can go. She can definitely go. She's proven that. Tessa Blanchard, pound for pound, could potentially be the best woman wrestler in all pro wrestling today. That's it's another conversation. But <laughs> if she if she's not your number one, she's definitely for me a top five in in any scenario. I'm not saying uh, to put it on her now, but in the in the near future, do you see yourself being swayed and agreeing to the idea of her having their heavyweight title? I think it's, um, I think it makes sense. Yeah. Um, 
I know there's going to be people that have a problem with that for, for a number of reasons, including if, if she beats Brian Cage for the title, assuming that he is still champion or champion again. Um, again, if, if she can go, she can go. Look, we've seen small men win titles before. I mean, hell, Austin Aries held that title. And Austin Aries ain't much bigger than Tessa Blanchard. He is not, no. Um, so, uh, Chris Saban. Yeah, Chris Saban too. Has yeah. held that title. Do I see Tessa Blanchard as champion? Yeah. Okay. I, uh, I I see her as X Division champion. I see her as World Heavyweight champion. I, I think she can. She's. I think any woman, as long as they can compete at that level, why not? And she's already established that. Is she worthy of uh, both of those trophies before Ty Valkyrie? Mm. Ty Valkyrie is definitely a legit player. Absolutely. <sighs> Um, I mean, to me, that's that's a tough comparison. But uh, is she more deserving? I don't know if I would say more deserving. I, w- I would say she's just as deserving. I think Taya and, and Tessa have done so much so much great uh, stuff for women wrestling. Um, obviously, Taya's done a lot of great stuff internationally. Tessa's more domestically than more domestic than than Taya is. But uh, yeah, I think Tessa Blanchard though. Tessa Blanchard right now, if we were going to go right right this very second, she's the type that could make a run and end it at, at Bound for Glory as champion. Um, she's she's definitely in that position to uh, to take off that way. And, uh, and, and why wouldn't you? Whereas Ty Valkyrie is... And this is why I'm, I'm, just, I'm putting logic in this. Okay. Ty Valkyrie is very, definitely well could do that and be put in that position but as of right now she's got a championship belt in her hand and uh, she doesn't seem to have any signs of stopping anytime soon as far as holding on to that belt do you so we're both in agreement you push Tessa right to, yeah to some for, in some form or fashion do you strap a rocket to her ass and, and uh, have have that push happen immediately or do you give her the slow burn treatment do we spoil this? Please. Can we spoil? Can we spoil the result? Please, please. Uh, Sammy Callahan beats Tessa Blanchard uh, in the main event of Slammiversary. <sighs> what did we talk about with Tetsuya Naito or with Kota Bushi? We mentioned the hero's journey. Tessa Blanchard, uh, ever since taking on the men, the way that she went through OVE, the the, the beating she gave Jake Christ uh, a f- few weeks prior to Slammiversary, she has established herself as a woman that is ready to break down barriers, which is great. But anytime that you establish yourself as one of those types of people, you're always going to run into obstacles. Obstacles that are going to be damn near impossible to break through. In this case, it's Sammy Callahan. It's the fucking draw. Now, I don't know... How Sammy Callahan won, it very well could have not been clean, but a win's a win. Tessa right. Blanchard lost, and therefore she lost momentum, or so we think. Sometimes a loss is enough to give you enough justification to give somebody an even bigger push and say, you know what, you know, we need you over here now. For me, Tessa Blanchard has established herself as somebody that can take that strap but it, you know, it's not to say that she's going to run through every single person in her way. She needs to struggle. The hero's journey. And you know, during a time where, again, this is being ahead of the curve. During a time where you know, women are dealing with equal rights and things of that nature. How fitting would it have been? How, what kind of great storytelling would it be if somebody that looks like them, meaning you know, you know a little girl watching this or what have you, triumphs over everything, including the loss. She suffered a great loss to Sammy Callahan, but she's going to pick herself up, she's going to move forward, and she's going to persevere through. Maybe getting her revenge on Sammy Callahan, maybe going through, you know, a a roster full of male wrestlers before finally getting her shot at the world title. You know, say, hey, women can do anything that men can do. Again, it's that hero's journey. I think that's where she's at. Uh, at least that's where she could be at. I'm not saying that's how they're going to book her, but uh, I I would much prefer, rather it be a slow rise than just skyrocket it. Healer, uh, healer face. 
I would do Babyface. Yeah? For this one. No shit. I would do Babyface because of the message that you're trying to convey. Okay. I know it's a little campy, but you're trying to convey yourself as a the role model that you can you can persevere through anything. You know, you you can persevere in a man's world even if you're just a woman. This kind of situation, that okay. kind of message. Uh, and that's what she's been. She's she's currently a baby face right now, at least in, in Impact Wrestling. Uh, I think she's a heel everywhere else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I think that established that that established can be established because of the fact that you know she has the lineage, she has the talent, she has the passion, she has a way of promoting herself. Uh, I don't know if you follow her on social media, but she has a way of promoting herself to, yeah. the, point, to the point where it's like, damn, like you really th- like honestly. Before I read these results. I thought she won the match. <laughs> I honestly did. I, I thought she won the match. I was like, oh, damn, she won it. And again, I don't know how, how it played out. We, I still have to watch it if I can get uh, any of the streaming to work now. <laughs> but um, but yeah, Sammy Callahan does beat Tessa Blanchard. But I, if, if, if it was my money, I would say Tessa Blanchard is not done wrestling intergender matches anytime soon, especially uh, this calendar year. Is there a specific intergender match you would like uh, to see her in? With that roster? With this roster? Mm-hmm. There's a few. And keep uh, in mind, uh, if you didn't read it, uh, a masked man showed up to attack Michael Elgin after his match. Uh, and the shape of his body, it's we're pretty much looking that it's probably Rhino. Okay. So, Rhino's on that roster. <laughs> Poor Rhino. He's, he's got that body like... It doesn't matter what fucking it's, mask you wear, bro. Like probably, we know it's you. Yeah, it's probably Rhino. It was short and fat. <laughs> I would I would love to see on this roster currently Blanchard versus Impact. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it's it's fitting too because you know Tessa Blanchard had a had a rivalry with Taya Valkyrie. For those who don't know, Taya Valkyrie is married to Johnny Impact. Yep, yep. Uh it's not it's not a secret on, on screen either. Right. Yeah. Blanchard <laughs> They play it off better than uh than fucking Rollins and uh and the man there. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, Bla- Tessa Blanchard versus Johnny Impact or even versus Rich Swan. I would love to see that that back and forth. But but I'm curious to see how she could put on a match against Brian Cage. I wouldn't say I would rank those two Though that match higher, I mean, as of right now, where it stands, that's of more importance because Brian Cage has the belt. But I would like to see how she can handle herself, and uh, I'm curious to see if she can get him up. She's yeah. a strong girl. Yeah, that would be very interesting. She's a very strong woman. So that would be very interesting. See, see, see if she can. I would do it. I would go. I would play that angle. Yeah. Uh, hell yeah. Like, come on, you know, we're going to go against each other. Let's see. Let's see if you can actually body slam me. Body slam challenge is back. Hell yeah. (laughs) It worked one time. Why not not a second? (laughs) But the Tessa Blanchard is that that special, a special talent. You know, the type of talent that, you you know, we see in Tony Storm. You know, again, Tony Storm, for me, had one of the best matches of 2018. The match she had at Beyond Wrestling against Timothy Thatcher, who, by the way, is coming to Major League Wrestling. Nice. I can't wait, dude. I can't wait. But yeah, that that match against Tony Storm it was fucking great, dude. They beat the shit out of each other. They did. They and, beat and, the shit out of each other. That's and you know what? Let's face it. If you want any kind of significant, any kind of significance placed on intergender matches, you're gonna have to go that route. You're gonna have to at some point. You're gonna have to beat the piss out of each other. I'm not saying it's got to be a full, yeah. a full, full on bar fight or anything, right. but. You have to wrestle one another. Well, there has to be legitimate pro wrestling there. What do I say about Hell in a Cell matches? Use the cell. Or don't be in a fucking or Hell in a Cell match. Yeah. Ladder matches. Use the fucking ladder or don't be in a ladder match. Same thing with intergender matches. If you're going to pull your punches even more so than you regularly would in a wrestling match, don't put an intergender match. You know, you can't be afraid to slap a girl in the chest. You know, to do chops because it's part of pro wrestling. Part, if, if that if that is if that's your thing, if you do chops, then that's your thing. Do, you do choppers, chop, yeah, chopper. Make that fucking chest bleed if you have to. Yeah, that's that. This, again, the old cliche. This ain't ballet. You're gonna you're gonna beat <laughs> each other up. You know that is that's the point. That is the point. And and I don't think Tessa Blanchard has any problem with that. Again, she went in the ring with fucking Sammy Callahan. Yeah. 
<laughs> that right there is, is a very uh, difficult thing to do. Because Callahan, had, not that you know, Callahan isn't a professional, he is a professional, but Callahan has a different mindset of pro wrestling. He's going to take your ass to the, to, to the limit. And he's going to expect you to be able to hang the entire time or pay the price. Uh, and I don't see that as, a, as an issue with Tessa Blanchard. Again, I haven't seen the match, but... But yeah, I mean, Tessa Blanchard is the, is the one that could change change the game, really, for female wrestling. If Sammy Callahan were to fuck up again, break someone else's face, but this time it being a female wrestler, does he get the same uh, opportunity to spin it into a, a heel role, or is it completely, that's it, that's the end of intergender matches in Impact Wrestling, or uh, professional wrestling? In professional wrestling, right. <laughs> <laughs> um... Man, it's a tough question. I would hope, I would hope not. I would hope that uh, that he gets the opportunity to do the same thing. You know, this would be the great, the, the perfect opportunity to get on a microphone, get in front of a camera, and say, "Tessa Blanchard, you know, I beat you within an inch of your life. You, you know, you, you know, let's say you broke her, her orbital bone. You know, I broke that. You know, the best way you can heal that is, you know, getting getting your ass back in the kitchen, kind of thing. Oh and man, shit like that." <laughs> You know, like if you want to be a, like they're saying, go full on heel mode. Yeah, go full on. You know, and, and really just really be disgusting about it. If Impact Wrestling wants the ratings, if they want to get out of that show, like we, people to watch, mm-hmm. I would let him. I, some like like you said with the Undertaker situation, sometimes doing the devious things is what's going to bring people to people yeah. to watch. Sometimes sometimes you got to piss people off a little bit to get what you want, and and that's definitely going to do it. That's definitely going to be like. Oh well, fuck these guys. They're gonna be like this, and then Tessa comes back, does the hero thing, and you know now she gets her revenge on Sammy Callahan, and says, you know, you can't. You know, women don't belong in the kitchen. Women belong wherever they want to be, or whatever kind of speech you want to make. And she defeats the big bad Sammy Callahan. People are watching. That wouldn't even be a bad idea if they do it kayfabe. Right. You know, have have her have him. Maybe they even did it. I don't know. I'm confused. <laughs> but have have him do something to her so devious to the point to where like she can't go for a while, to the point where they pay her enough to say, "Hey, don't take any dates for let's say two or three weeks. Yeah, don't don't work. You know, we'll we'll pay you to stay home, kind of thing. Um, I would take that route because something you know, it's the old pay, spend a little money to make some money, make a lot yeah. of money. Oh yeah. Uh, and, and again, let Sammy Callahan be Sammy Callahan and really get out of people's skin to the point where it's like, I want to see this guy get his ass kicked. And this time it would be done by a woman. Uh, but at any rate, I do applaud them. I, I mean, I was expecting Tessa to actually get the win. Again, I have to see this match. I don't know how it ends. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know if it's going to be a clean win or it's not. It's going to be interesting to watch this match. <laughs> But and it goes fifteen minutes. Yeah, fifteen F- fucking minutes. Fifteen man. minutes. So, <laughs> but but at any rate, I do applaud them. Again, you have, you have three. No, excuse me. You have four championship four matches. Four championships. And this is your main event. There's nothing on the line. Not no no respect. gimmicks. It's just respect. Just respect. Tessa Blanchard wanted respect, and she got she got in the ring with Sammy Callahan. And you know what? Here's the cliche thing. Whether she get, even though she got the loss, she definitely earned. The respect of everybody to do that, you know, and and break those break those barriers, break those barriers, you know. So this is a again we've been talking about this since we started the show. Women wrestling is on a, that it's it's on that that roller coaster ride of, of breaking those those glass ceilings, and you know sometimes they take a few steps backwards, but overall they've done such an amazing job as a whole to establish themselves, establish women wrestling as a legit source of watching professional wrestling and i and it starts with people like tessa blanchard as well as so many others that we've mentioned throughout our past uh, 71 episodes now wow 71 ladies and gentlemen that's gonna do it for us this week as always thank you for listening and supporting the show remember visit our sponsors help us help you <laughs> You scratch our back, we'll scratch yours. Yeah, a uh, special shout out to uh, to GameStop. Yeah, uh, GameStop. GameStop, man. Uh, Cash Rush said, no, buy new and used video games. Trade in or sell the ones you don't want. And, and, and you go through our website, 20x20crew.com slash podcast slash GameStop. You find so many ways to save money. Become a pro member. 
And not only that, but for the, for shopping online, you can also buy retro stuff, which means you can buy N64, PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, NES. Things that you might not find in your local GameStop. No, things, you, things I almost guarantee you, you will not find in your local GameStop. <laughs> and when you go there, uh, be sure to check out games like No Mercy, WrestleMania 2000, Attitude, oh, yeah. you know, a plethora of great wrestling games, as well as so many other games out there. That's 20x20crew.com slash podcast slash GameStop. Again, we, we mentioned getting paid to listen to us. We you know, can't stress that enough. But in the meantime, visit uh, visit our friends over at Raise at 20x20crew.com slash podcast slash Raise and get discounting gift cards. Including GameStop gift including cards. Including GameStop. I mean... Before you shop at GameStop, go to Raise, buy discounted uh, GameStop gift cards, save even more money, folks. We just want you to save money. Save money, man. Save money. It's it's a it's a few extra clicks. That's it. To save to save some dough. So uh, again, twenty x twenty crew dot com slash podcast slash Raise, and as always, we want you to support professional wrestling. That means getting your butts out and going to live wrestling shows. You could take the money that you save from GameStop and put it towards tickets to a show. How about that? Absolutely. Right? 20x20crew.com slash podcast slash brown paper tickets for all your local wrestling ticket needs. Um, I think the last time I counted, I think there was like 15 to 20 different uh, indie feds across the country who are on brown paper tickets, who use brown paper tickets to promote ticket sales. Right. Ladies and gents, I mean, 10 bucks sometimes, 15 bucks to, to attend a show. And if you're, hopefully you're like us and you have a venue like uh, Cicero Stadium where there's not a bad seat in the house. Yeah. You get to go see all kinds of stuff there. Um, but you'll, you won't know until you go check, check out tickets. And I'm, I'm telling you right now, guys, I mean, we mentioned... Thirty dollars. We mentioned one hundred dollars to meet thirty people, including Mick Foley. That's not just Warrior Wrestling that does that. Yeah, there's you there's know? plenty of different places yeah. that do it. I'm not saying you're going to meet Mick Foley all the time, but I mean there's there's a plethora of, of ways to meet some of your favorite wrestlers out there. Super cheap. Yeah. And I mean, just absolutely great way. I I had such an amazing time going to these smaller shows and 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 meeting wrestlers and and there's a there's a few of them. There's a handful of them that. Maybe not now because of the haircut, but uh, rec- recognize me and, 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 and pointed me out from past shows. So, uh, you know, you never know. You never know that uh, you might uh, you might meet somebody and, uh, you know, and strike up a conversation with some of your favorite wrestlers. So, which is always a cool thing. Always. So, always. Yeah. Get yourself out there. Support professional wrestling. Uh, support your 20 by 20 ring crew. We are available on Facebook. Facebook.com slash 20x20 crew is our official Facebook page. We uh, we have our own Facebook group. Come and talk to Matt and myself. We just talk wrestling. We love to talk wrestling. Yeah. Tw- uh, Whatever you got. Yeah. Facebook.com slash groups slash 20x20 talk. We'll take you there. Uh, we also have uh, exclusive content on YouTube in the form of the following contest. That's right, Matt and I fantasy book all kinds of matches that you normally wouldn't see or hear about anywhere else. Purely for the love of the sport, man. Uh, you can find more information over at 20x20crew.com slash podcast slash YouTube. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We are always looking for subscribers on YouTube. To, uh, to check out our content. And uh, thank you. Thank you again for all the support. We are on Twitter. Twitter.com slash 20x20crew. You can hate tweet us over there. Send us pics and stuff uh, over at Instagram. Instagram.com slash 20x20crew. Uh, email us 20x20crew at gmail.com for the time being. With your questions, comments, concerns, and what have you. You want a fantasy book with us? Hell. Send, send us an email. Shoot us some info. And then, of course... Our home on the web, 20x20crew.com, where you will find all of our past episodes, merchandise, news, all kinds of goodies when it comes to professional wrestling. I believe that's it. Do you want to do it this week, or am I doing it this week? Yeah, I'll do it. All right. Uh, Again, ladies and gentlemen, support professional wrestling, continue to support your crew. Uh, I've been Matt. He's been Joe. 
You guys have been fantastic. Until next week, we will see, see you in, in the, the ring. ring.